When I was a little girl, my parents taught me that I can do anything I set my mind to. But what do I do when the anxiety sets in and I feel like I can't do what I've set my mind to? I guess we'll have to see. conversation about riding anxiety and the fact that you don't have to go down or have something happen to you to experience it because I've had it for the past year and it came out of the blue nothing happened to me all right so I took a picture of my gas receipt so we're starting officially at 12:25, and so i already took the picture with the odometer i just need to upload it to spot and let's get this thing started why would anyone choose to ride 1,000 miles in 24 hours well for me it's about pushing my limits proving to myself that i can conquer the toughest of challenges this is about more than just the iron butt certification this is about facing my anxiety head on August 12th, 12.30 a.m., the journey began. The night was still, the road ahead was long, and as if to remind me of the risk, deer stood watch by the roadside. The excitement was real, but so was the anxiety. 1,000 miles by myself. Can I really do this? As the first miles passed, I found myself alone with my thoughts. The darkness was both comforting and unnerving. The road in front of me was open and my journey had just begun. <sighs> All right, first stop. I'm gonna gas up first and make sure this thing gives me a receipt before I do anything else. Cause I don't wanna get off this bike and thing rule number one don't get distracted at the pump because if you do you'll let your receipt time out and then you can't print it and the gas station is closed so you can't get a reprint and then you'll try to put your card in but it won't read it because now it's a back-to-back -back transaction and it won't do it back anyway rule number one don't get distracted at the pump Okay, let me try this again at a different gas station. Okay, I had to pull over to another, pull up to another gas station because I got distracted and my phone timed or the receipt thing timed out. That's when I'm gonna look back up. See, you can't be distracted when you're doing these rides. But um, tapping Hannock is done. Next up is Alexandria. So that is in 88 miles. So I like this because like having the different cities to stop in and it's not that much of a distance between each one. It's like, it makes it, it makes it a lot. Well, this is only my first stop, but so far I like, I like having these sh short little legs. So this is stop number two and this is Tappahannock. Spelled type of panic wrong. It'll be okay. Alright, and we are at 9815 for the mileage. I'll tell you this tank bag is coming in handy. Alright, let's get this picture.
lucky for me, all the gas stations I've gone to, the receipts have been printing. So I don't have to go in. But let's hope that lasts forever for the entire trip. Okay, so custom message, Tepahannock gas stop. Okay. And then we're going to the library. But this is pretty much what I'm doing. Just taking a picture of the receipt with the mileage. And then we're going to send that. And we should be good. And then I just, I always check my spot wallet to make sure it's tracking me. And it is. So you can see those little squares where the pictures were uploaded. So, all right, next stop is Alexandria. But then a hiccup. My GPS took me into Maryland and I wasn't supposed to leave Virginia. I had to backtrack, making sure to stay inside the state line. A small detour and a small setback. I adjusted my GPS to reroute me to Alexandria while staying inside the Virginia state lines, but doing so took me down a dark curvy road that definitely shot my anxiety through the roof. And after a tense 30 miles on that back road, I heard angels start singing. I saw a halo present itself on the side of the road and in that halo, it was the I-95 highway sign. That's right, I was about to get back on the highway and my heart and my soul felt so full that anxiety was lifted and now I was cruising on the highway and now all I had to look forward to was the sun coming up. So I'm number three. Not only do I get to look forward to the different cities I'm riding to, but I also get to look forward to the sun coming up. I'm actually not tired, but the thought of the sun coming up in an hour or so makes me excited. We are heading to Winchester, Virginia. So let's hope this doesn't take me out of the state. I'm double checking my route this time. Cause um, we are not trying to get turned around. All right, this is looking like interstate or is it? Nope, it's a little bit of back road. As I made my way from Alexandria to Winchester, the darkness gave way to the light and the world around me began to wake up and so did my resolve. The road was open and I was ready to finish the rest of this 1,000 mile challenge. stations and I'll be fine so that's what I'm gonna keep going when I get to like um, Danville I'm gonna see if I'm gonna hit my thousand I should hit my thousand I've been the kingdom coming back so I should be good but anyway I'll check in with y'all later 
So that break was just what I needed to get me into Independence, Virginia. Now, up until this point, this ride has been very easy. Other than riding in the dark and dealing with deer on the side of the road in the morning, this has been all interstate up until this point with checkpoints every maybe 75 to 150 miles. So it was really easy. But once I got into those deep mountains, the road started getting curvy and if you know anything about me you know that i love a curvy road so this was just what i needed to really give me that second win to pound through those next at least 100 miles now every now and then when i'm riding there are those people who pass you on the road or who you pass on the road who give you that little swift motivation maybe a hand wave or a bike wave whatever it may be but in this area on this road there was a lot of construction going on and i rode through a construction zone and one of the traffic controllers actually threw up the biker wave and i was like okay let's go that was the motivation i needed to just keep pushing you never know what a small gesture can do for somebody's motivation If you ever travel into coastal Virginia from the south, most likely you're going to ride Highway 58. Now, Highway 58 is a popular road around here because that's where Emporia is. And they warn you to slow down through Emporia because they will get you. But this is what I call the other side of 58. This is in the mountains. And this road took me all the way from Bristol back to Virginia Beach. It was a straight shot, all back road, back home this was the hardest stretch of my ride okay it was the last 300 miles curvy roads yes they're fun but they get exhausting after a while and when you've already ridden 750 miles it's just even more exhausting so all curvy roads mountains but on the flip side some of the most beautiful views oh my god i had to pull over i had to pull over and get some pictures because who wouldn't welcome to Lover's Leap. Like, my body wakes up, but like, I mean, let's go. Yeah, <clears throat> that was a much younger me. I must be getting old or something because uh, I'm tired. I'm beat down. Man, I'm not even in my last stop yet. I have. 900 and some change on the odometer for well, the trip so oh, I'm tired I'm tired I'm tired it's a hotel right up the street girl you know you don't want to woman do what possessed miles? you to ride 1,000 miles today 75 for real? miles is so far all I know is I needed to stop this isn't even one of the counted cities. I just, I needed this stop to rest, to just, cause I got plenty of time. I got to 12.30 and it's only seven o'clock. So before I stopped here, it said ETA back to the starting point was, uh, um, it was, starting point was 8.45. And I had planned to get back at seven, so. But I just drank a body armor and 
just been kind of sitting here. Usually I guess up first. I was so tired. I, I, I just, I didn't even guess. Up. So I'm doing it now. So I can get home. Because I'm tired. Exhaustion has taken over my mind and my body. My eyes, they no longer burn. They just hurt. My body, it's sore, it's stiff, and it's so hard to get off this bike. But just in that moment, when I felt the most defeat, who pops up behind me but my dad? Showing his love and support. I look down at my phone and it says, I'm right behind you. And that was all I needed to push through those last 50 miles to get back to Virginia Beach. My ride wasn't perfect. There were laughs, mistakes, and lots of learning along the way, but that's what makes it worth it. Whatever your challenge is, just know that getting started is the hardest part. The rest, well, that's where the magic happens. 